All right, so this is my presentation for my essay, which is called In Defense of Capitalism. So first off, I just really want to thank you, Professor Bouchel, for working with me because I wasn't able to make it to class to present it. So thank you for accepting me, accepting this recording. I very much appreciate your willingness to work with me and my work schedule. Um, so I just wrote this to kind of explain what capitalism is and what it is not. I think it's kind of misunderstood. Um, I think there's kind of a negative feeling that comes with the word capitalism a lot. And I think that it's not really well represented. Okay. In defense of capitalism... We live in a country that has flourished from capitalism for over 200 years. The benefits have been tremendous for many people. The American people have one of the highest standards of living in the world. Not only do we enjoy such a high standard of living, we also enjoy the freedom of opportunity, meaning that we are free to choose our profession and way of life. This country has benefited tremendously as a result of a capitalistic government that was established by some extraordinary men in the 18th century, whom I believe were led by God to establish a system this country needed. While we have enjoyed many benefits from this system, there are also some things that most definitely need to be addressed. I will try to address some of the concerns about capitalism in my essay. I will also explain what capitalism is and is not. However, in this essay, this is about why I think that the free market is the best system available for us today. A wise and frugal government shall restrain men from injuring one another, shall leave them otherwise free to regulate their own pursuits of, in, of industry and improvement, and shall not take from the mouth of labor the bread that it has earned. This is the sum of good government. A quote from Thomas Jefferson in, the first, in his first inaugural address, March 4th, 1801. There is a broad and varied view on what capitalism is and its results on a people. To put it simply, capitalism is the free trade of goods. In other words, a capitalistic country will protect people's right to their property and labor. Capitalism ensures that people are free to trade their labor to, or their property to another person for that person's labor or property. In today's world, though, we seldom trade for labor or property. More often, we trade cur currency, which is a representation of labor or property. At its heart, all capitalism represents is a protection of our right to make of ourselves what we will based on our knowledge, skill, and effort. The system naturally balances itself out, needing no guiding force other than the consumer. The competition of striving to produce the best product available that it might sell the best will naturally increase the standard of living for all parties involved. Along with the trade for labor, there is an inequality of labor value. This is not wrong, but merely comes with an accumulation of certain skills and experience. For example, I work with my aunt. She has worked for a company for 30 years and has acquired a vast amount of knowledge and skill. She is paid much more than I am because her label, labor is that much more valuable to the company. Someday, should I decide to stay long enough, I would hopefully have obtained those skills and be paid similar to her. According to the value of my time to the company. However, this raises a concern. What if they offer me an amount that I believe is disproportionate to the value of my time? If I am dissatisfied, I am free to void the contract and seek out somebody who values my labor more highly. Many people complain of low wages and blame the company at which they work for such low wages. Employment is a contract where the company offers you what they think your time is worth. You can negotiate or decline. A people who are possessed... Oh, it just disappeared. Come back. Okay. A people who are possessed of the spirit of commerce, who see and who will pursue their advantages, may achieve almost anything. By George Washington in a letter to Benjamin Harrison. Capitalism allows us to maintain our human rights to our property and labor. It enables us to seek improvement of our own estates. The seeking of improvement is what drives the economy. Let's say, what I Let's say that I decide to open a business. I must ensure that I offer either a quality product or low prices in order to make a living. If my product lacks quality or is too expensive, then my company will surely fail. This gives a business owner incentive to produce the best product this improves the quality of living 
and also gives incentive to improve oneself and gain new skills and connections. There are many benefits to capitalism. As mentioned earlier, it has been the driving force to making America one of the greatest countries in the world. There are some counter-arguments made against free enterprise that can be very appealing and can often confuse many people. Today we see many large corporations that engage in terrible dealings. Wherever there is a profit to be made, you will find people doing bad things to benefit themselves. One thing that is done is large corporations trading favors and campaign money. And during the politician, oh, I forgot to write in there, large corporations trading favors with politicians for campaign money. Endearing the politician to pass laws to benefit the corporations. Often the laws or regulations passed affect the corporation's competition, running them out of business or making it much harder for them. Many call this a flaw of capitalism, but it is in fact called corporatism. It is an evil practice and is definitely not in line with capitalism. Capitalism is merely the free trade of goods. Seeking out higher power to encroach on the rights that are guaranteed by a free market is not a part of it. I would like to state that not all large corporations engage in such actions. I believe there are many that find their way to success honestly and stay there by fulfilling their purpose of filling people's needs. Especially today, we often hear the argument concerning the employees of a company. It is said they do not do all the work and receive only a tiny amount of the benefit. That is, a, that is disproportionate to the amount of gain that the company receives. Meanwhile, the business owner sits on their butts and reap all the benefits. And I'm sorry, I got a little bit excited on this part. I always hated this argument. Oh, I hate hearing this argument. It kind of bothers me. And it says, I strongly detest this statement and belief. Think it is, I think it is a terrible lie to spread and shows a basic lack of understanding of our economical system. Whether one agrees with capitalism or not, firstly, there are very few cases in which a person can be utterly lazy and waste their money and still maintain a company still maintain a company and stay rich. As the old saying goes, it's not how much you make, but how much you spend. There are some exceptions, of course, of people who do not work, yet still maintain a certain level of comfort. However, the ex they are the exception and not the rule. Next, logically remember that the relationship between employer and employee is that of a contract. If one wants a part of the benefits from the com company's profits, it must be negotiated. If one is unsatisfied, they can seek employment elsewhere, but merely completing a task that, is, that one already agreed to complete that is, does not entitle that the benefits beyond the agreement should be a part of that. There are many other points I would like to make on this paragraph, but must hold my tongue for lack of space. I will finish with one last point though. The business owner is enabled to maintain a higher growth rate and the ability to make decisions for the company because the business, business owner is the one who carries the risk. His ownership of the means of production and the risk of failure that he must face is a part of the price he pays. For without risk, there is no substantial gain. To take from one, because it is thought his own industry and that of his father's has acquired too much in order to spare others who or, the, who or whose fathers have not exercised equal industry and skill is to violate arbitrarily the first principle of association the guarantee of everyone the free exercise of his industry and the fruits acquired by it. Thomas Jefferson, in a letter to Joseph Milgan, April 6th, 1816. In conclusion, the practice of free enterprise, if it is allowed to do so, will continue to carry our country to greater heights. It will help people to become the best they can be, not because it is any sort of magical system that does magical things. The beauty of free enterprise is the simplicity of it. Essentially what it does is enable mankind to, to do what they want to do anyway, to become our best selves, improving and growing every step of the way.